Hello and welcome back to Compiler Programming. Today, as you can probably guess from the title video, I want to work on intrinsics. And now, usually in the compiler, intrinsic is something that is defined in the compiler itself. So, for example, if we consider something like memcopy in, uh, in C compilers, Technically, that is defined as a function, but it has a very specific implementation in the compiler and it actually looks at the values that are passed to it and might choose uh, implementation internally depending on exactly what are you passing to it and uh, uh, things like that. So, for example, if it knows that so like A, B and I explicitly say that I want a byte or I want a uh, I don't know, eight bytes, right, uh, here, then it might choose a different instruction to copy, uh, whereas if I don't have a specified length, it will maybe choose a more runtime procedure that will uh, decide what best to do at runtime. And all of this logic lives inside of a compiler, and when we, uh, in our code, do memcopy, uh, compiler executes that logic. Uh, and there is already equivalent stuff in uh, mass. So if we look at something like size of, um, let me find, uh, maybe it's a size of, yes, mm, it has a underscore. So this is exactly what's, uh, what we have here we have this function that accepts a context, it uh, accepts some kind of payload. Now, in reality, this could totally be a value view to be more uh, generic. So like it could accept any number of <coughs> arguments or... And uh, then it returns a new value. So would be cool if I was able to take this code, since there is nothing really... Uh, interesting here. There's nothing that really requires um, it to be in the compiler and I could um, extract it into um, outside. But right now that is not really something that is uh, possible. Now there is uh, an interesting question about what would be the signature of the, of the intrinsic and I haven't decided uh, whether it should acce always accept any number of arguments or it will be overloadable on a number of arguments. I don't know yet. Uh, maybe I think I will start with the most generic version. So it just accepts a uh, value view, which is kind of a, uh, a view on an array of uh, values. And then it returns a value. Unlike the um, this one, I think it will probably return a value by value, so not by pointer, but we'll see. You know, this is a very <coughs> hand wavy introduction, so let's just dive right in and hopefully it will get clearer. So should be able to uh, define intrinsic functions. Okay, or just intrinsics to have user-defined intrinsics, something like that. Okay, so how would that look like? First of all, it's not something that we will be able to call uh, directly, so we'll need a wrapper function, so let's create one, and we will have a 64, right, and here we'll say my intrinsic and we are gonna pass something to it. So let's say one, two. So it should get two number literals, I guess. And then we need to actually create an intrinsic. So we'll say my intrinsic and here, instead of the function here, uh, we would write intrinsic and I'm not even sure I want to allow people to specify 
uh, any of these so I, I, will, I will think about whether it should be there or not because the return type is always going to be value and it's just another thing that people can mess up if they write this so I think it would be great if you don't uh, write the uh, return value and here uh, maybe uh, we also don't want arguments mm. I don't know and then you will basically just get uh, the uh, arguments like this you, you there will always be defined uh, an argument called arguments that can, contains all the arguments inside a value view okay so um, maybe Maybe what we can do is something like this. I believe we have a length on the value view. Um, let's check here. Yeah, we have length. Great. So that means we should be able to, to do it this way. And then we check that return is two. Okay, now that I'm thinking about it, uh, maybe just doing it in like arguments at length will not really work because this is going to be a, like a real value and we want this to return uh, one of these, uh, one of these, right? And so this is going to be a number and we want a value back, right? So that means that we need to escape this. We actually do have um, sort of reflection set up. So it probably will do something like uh, this, I guess, maybe. Uh, I actually need two slashes here because this is a string. Yeah, I think it's going to be something along these lines. This is going to be a tricky one, I guess, but let's see if all of our other infrastructure actually works. Now, the first thing we need to do is to parse this and um, this is where we have parse function literal. Although maybe I want a separate one. Yeah, let, let's do a separate one. But we can sort of take you from this and uh, have it as our starting point uh, we don't want it at it's always going to be at maybe we actually want it like this at intrinsic i mean why not let's say that it's always a intrinsic so then we don't need maybe match we just say token match and here we say intrinsic okay we don't need any of that Okay, now what is the next thing that we need to do? Well, next is uh, we say expect match and we expect a curly here and we say that that is a body. Okay, uh, what do we do with that? body um, I guess in reality we are going to create a function uh, it's just that this function is going to be kind of interesting mm, aim, no okay so let's take this code and then uh, think about how it will work so our function literal wants to have args and it wants to have a returns okay and both of those are actually 
tokens in this case so let's look at what this does okay so it goes here okay it creates a new epoch fine creates a function scope good sets this up and then it starts to parse mm, okay and does match return type okay so here i believe we should be able to just pass a type and that's going to be fine uh, for the arguments it is a bit more tricky uh, because it expects this to be explicitly a group and it might be worth uh, trying to rearrange this stuff a bit before we proceed any further so let's uh, disable this test for now and let's change how this is organized um, so what if we accept this as a value view and we will call it you how will that work okay here we can disable this for now until we just do the refactoring return zero doesn't matter we're not calling this function anyway and we just need to fix right parse function literal it's because this is parse intrinsic literal okay and in here i need to say that value of u args u is value as a group uh, of args and children now i can do args u and it should be exactly the same as it was before um this macro yeah this is not For now like this okay let's run the tests and see that it still works it does that is great that means now we can go back to writing our intrinsic stuff and for the argument now do we have value of u here yes we do so okay that's great uh, that means uh, we need to do the following we need to like sort of create a fake uh, argument list so we are creating a fake uh, something like this so we need to say that uh, we have uh, a name then column and then uh, type this is what we need to put in there so let's do that um, we are going to say value uh, star star or rather like this arc arcs tokens is uh, going to be first we need a name um name 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 how do we do that well for that we need to have another value so value star name symbol is going to be um 
I think I can look into tokenizer or maybe even uh, use the same thing as used in a tokenizer. So in here, when we have an identifier somewhere, yes, symbol. Okay, so we actually do have token make symbol. That's perfect. Uh, and that seems great. So we have allocator, that is not a problem. Then we have a name uh, that is easy. Slice, uh, well, we can do something along these lines. It's going to be quite a long one, so let's format it better. Literal of arguments, so we want the, the name of the arguments to be arguments. It's a symbol like, and the range. Um, I guess let's give it the range of the keyword. So keyword uh, source range. Okay, and we're gonna be putting name symbol in here. And like this. Now we're gonna say void function info so the compiler is not angry at us. Does that build? Uh, missing semicolon before mm, right okay args and defined all right we need now to create a value view and this is gonna be args view we have the setup of the value view here values length and source range okay we can do that so values is args tokens then we have length is count of arcs tokens and we need source range and source range is also keyword source range and that seems perfectly fine a returns undeclared identifier that is also okay so we say returns is mm, value type I think it's weird like this no descriptor type so this is just the value type okay let's it's like this no why is it not defined let's look into here I mean, it should define the type value. Uh, what does it expand to? So it gets a name. Ah, it's called, so it's type value value. I was correct the first time. It's just, it's a bit other way around. It's called type value value. Okay. That is good. So we can even uh, put it uh, like so. 
Uh, that seems great. And now we need to do something about the body. Now we don't need an if, so this goes away. Actually, uh, we need to say that our intrinsic uh, can only be called at compile time. So this flag goes here. We don't need any of that. And we probably want something along these lines. Actually, this probably needs to be here. Okay. We need to create the literal. Oh, that's body. That is a perfect body. Okay, that builds. Now let's see what happens when we try to run this. Uh, running, 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 running. Like so. Let's actually only run this test now. So it's a bit more focused on what happens. So the test failed, that is unsurprising. It says it cannot parse an expression. I wonder which expression it is. So first let's do something even simpler. We will just uh, do this. So we will not even try to access arguments, we will just straight up return uh, a value whose for the escape number literal. Let's see what that will do. Okay, that still does not work. It still says unable to parse the expression. That is not very helpful. What am I doing? Ah, okay. Yes, yes. I know what I'm doing wrong, definitely. Because, um, because, because, because uh, we need to add this to the list of parsers which are here. Uh, now it's unhappy because Maybe I do want to make it an expression. Okay, let's put it here for now and then we'll, I will decide if that's the best place to put this. Doesn't really matter, the point is we just want to try to parse this. Okay. Well, that's not really changing much, except that it now complains on the next point. So that's kind of unfortunate. Yes, it's time to bring out the debugger and see what is going on. We can do uh, context. I want context error. Let's do this. So whenever we get an error, in this case a parsing error, we will know where it, when it's happening, and we will be able to look at this stuff. Right. Makes sense. Because I did not finish this stuff. So I created an uh, a name symbol 
but we also need more stuff we also need to create a colon symbol so it's like this and this this operator like and then finally we need to create a type and i'm not actually sure if i can provide the type directly here or it will not work but we can try so the type of this is a uh, type value view type value value view no Wait, uh, here, where is it? Type value value. So it's type value view uh, value. Maybe I need a better convention for generating these names. Uh, okay, so that should be better. Now we do have one argument with the thing. I probably want and to structure this a bit differently but that's okay for now uh wait i don't want another instance of visual studio i uh, what i want to do is try to run this one well we still are very unhappy about this so what is uh, happening here? View source range. So it is still unhappy about the range. Um, token parse expression so the view is yeah it is the whole it's uh, this stuff right and it doesn't know how to parse it which is kind of unfortunate okay what if we try to go here and see where we are where is it going wrong okay so we found add we got the keyword seems perfectly fine yeah and then we expect a body okay all of this is okay we create this stuff and now we try to go into here we do all of these things that's fine um, uh, is this success yes so function returns is descriptor okay that is perfect so this stuff works we create an array we split this should be uh, still the same thing did it match an argument yes it did oh i think i know what is wrong i know i know i know uh, if we go to our implementation all right we need to say how much we matched yeah so in here before we are done we need to say peak index so we basically matched uh, three three things right 
otherwise it thinks that we didn't match it and tries to parse it with some other parser and it obviously fails because no other parser knows how to parse this okay So that's fine. We still have an error. And now the error, of course, is that it is very unhappy about the fact that the, the types don't match, I assume. Yeah, exactly. So that's fine. That is okay. That just means we are ready for the next step. So we are we are able to parse this stuff. Now we need to be to be able to actually call it, and this is also going to be a bit tricky. The first thing is we need to mm, decide where in overload uh, power kind of this leaves. So if I have another thing that is also called my intrinsic but it's not actually an intrinsic it's going to be something like function uh, and then we would have whatever so let's say i have something like this uh, the question is which one will be called and here i need to say x is whatever s64 y S64, so the, the number of arguments actually, actually matches. So there are two options. I can either say that intrinsic is the most powerful mm, variant of an overload, or it is the least powerful variant of the overload. And to be honest, I don't know what is the right way to go about it. There could be ma arguments made for both versions. I think I will make it the, the least powerful and then, because that would allow to specialize uh, intrinsic to uh, concrete concrete values here and dispatch it to different things. So I, th I think that's what I want to do, um, but I'm not exactly sure. Um, but let's, that's actually something to check later. Uh, for now, we just need to make sure that it matches at all. And for that, we need to go to function call. So here and in here, we do funky stuff. So let's look at this. So if target expression, blah, blah, blah. Maybe I do want a custom version here hmm this is an interesting question but anyhow let's consider this so we go through overloads okay this create this parses arguments uh, what exactly does it do with arguments? Do, 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 do. E does parse expression. Is that something that we want? That is an interesting question. I guess e yes. Yeah, I think that is fine. So we go through this thing and we go here. That's fine. And then we have calculate arguments match score. So minus one is sort of no score. And if we want our intrinsic to be the lowest score possible, we need to do something along the lines of if to call info flags ampersand 
action in for action flex um Yeah, so we need to create a new flag that is going to be intrinsic. And then we just say that let's do a ternary expression here. I think this needs to be in braces because in C um this kind of stuff has a weird precedence so if it is an intrinsic then we just say straight up zero otherwise uh, we will do what we were doing before where we say calculate match score now of course we need to add this flag in here and uh, add it like so so that's going to be an intrinsic. Okay. And we also need to add this flag to our stuff here. So I'm not even sure I want compile time. I guess I do. Uh, probably won't hurt. Okay, that builds. Now the tricky part is when we are trying to call this, it is actually going to be a bit different from what we expect. So let's restructure this. We'll say if info, and then actually we can do both of these. I guess this stuff just avoids uh, sort of recursive compile time calls where we uh, try to the way we right now call functions on compile time we uh, just assume we just take the same expression and say that uh, it needs to be uh, evaluated differently and this prevents recursion there um, but now we can say something along these lines so uh, maybe the way it was is sort of fine and now in here we will do something interesting So we will check if the flags it contains our new flag for intrinsics. Then we do one thing, and otherwise we do uh, something else. And the tricky part is here we will try to evaluate with a very different uh, setup than we had before. Mm. Okay, so how do we do this? We need to somehow communicate, somehow get the we need to compile this intrinsic into native code when since we ex know exactly what kind of arguments it expects we should be able to just call it which is kind of handy not gonna lie so 
so we would say something like value star jitted mm, intrinsic and it accepts a value view and this is something and then in here uh, we it returns a value and we need to copy that value out I guess and go from there uh, so value star uh, copy is uh, intrinsic of the first we need to have value view args view and uh, that is going to be like value view from value array yep that is exactly what i want so value view from value array and we can just say args right uh, do, 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 yes args and something like this is there uh, well we can uh, say actually we do have already a result right uh, not really so we say result is allocator allocate context allocator and then value And then star result is this. Does that build? No, it does not. Uh, what do you want? I ah, you want a source range. That is okay because we can marks token. Yeah, that's fine. So we can do arx token source range. This now goes into here. Now that I'm looking at it, I'm not even sure that it needs to be inside of this block, but uh, I don't think it will hurt us too much to do it this way okay that builds but it will obviously crash when we try to call this in we can actually verify that that is the case but I expect us to crash exactly here because this is a null right uh, we don't actually have a function yet that we can call and yeah that is exactly what happens but that is okay now we need to somehow ensure that we actually we actually actually have a function to call so this is our regular function call and we have ensure function instance i guess that is exactly what we want maybe um, let's look at compile time eval instead that might give us a better thing to copy from if we can just find it, it would be great. Yeah, 
here's the thing so we do this fine then we get the function we set the calling convention um, and there is this builder we parse I feel like this stuff can be yeah maybe we can and uh, sure why is it like it sure function instance okay so I guess it is in here yeah so we have ensure function instance and that's fine to do uh, we have cached instance and we need to create a compile time eval context it's fine this will do its thingy yeah i, I believe we can just call this function and it will do what we want so ensure function instance um, but at the same time At the same time we probably want this because we need to make sure that it's executed in the in the right context so uh, overload i guess is what we need to do this and then we provided uh, this uh, evil context evil context and the point the reason we are creating a custom context here is because we need to have this the correct program set because program in term determines uh, here which calling convention we are using uh, imagine that you're cross compiling right now it doesn't matter really but if you're cross compiling uh, on compile time you for example do have a calling convention of windows but uh, at runtime you will have a calling convention of something else and you will also have different architectures eventually right now again it's not supported but it will be and this is uh, why it is required that we uh, explicitly say that we are trying to compile this function for execution at compile time okay uh scope i don't think i actually care about a different scope uh, that is fine let's not create a new one um okay so that is all good and i think i want to also do jit uh something no how do I actually force the JIT? Ah, program JIT, yes. This is what I want. Uh, program JIT. Yes, I will need to do this again. Now we need to get the label from somewhere. Where do we get the label from? So function instance. Ah, that's actually function value, I guess, right? Because function value uh, cached instance 
where are we putting the cache the instance and what is there cached oh, it's here yeah okay so that's perfect we can do um assert uh, value is or instance storage so storage is label of instance storage here we need to do mass on error of eval context result return zero so if we were not able to actually create a function instance this will be an error uh, program jit i don't think program jit ever errors which is kind of nice and now we have jitted code and here we just say um label index is uh, instance uh, storage and we get the label uh, label index uh, do, 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 do. that's not the one I'm interested in no this is a creation of a label I guess uh, go to I think is what I want uh, no hmm Right, we no longer have a go to. So it's here somewhere, right? Uh, storage static. Yeah, okay, so that's what I want. Uh, right that's missing a brace value and declared identifier yes that's not value that's instance that's here and value not a function right that's missing another pair of braces uh, jitted code uh, missing semicolon Okay, so that is very funky. So let's trade up break here and see what, what we get. Okay, we do this stuff, all that is fine. Now this explodes fine what is the error the error says that it's a type mismatch ah okay so it does return a pointer already that is even better to uh, for us uh, that just means so here it needs to be value star value star and we don't need to do allocate we just do a result and in uh, where we create the intrinsic uh, in here we just need to say that it returns type value pointer value uh, Mm, 
maybe I'm actually not creating those. Um, if I type value, yeah, I'm not creating those. So we will just need to add one here. Va uh, name pointer value and then descriptor name uh, pointer. Okay, that is good. Let's try this again. Well, that's that looks good. Uh, it seems that we were able to successfully compile this function, but it will run. It's a separate topic altogether. We were able to jit it. We got the label and we got the problem. Why exactly? Storage byte size four. This is very strange. No, byte size sixteen. Uh, so it is four and expect sixteen. And it's very confusing. Um what am I doing wrong? Mm, right. I know what I'm doing wrong. So this is a different type of label from what I expect it to be. I don't need to do this. I need to do instance uh, storage, uh, sorry, storage, memory, location, uh, I haven't worked this code in a bit, so I forgot uh, how it actually is. Um, memory location. Right, so it's instruction pointer relative label index. That's how it is. It's a bit of a crazy name. Now we should be in a better spot, hopefully. Let's see. That is okay. Well, we got something out. That's good, I guess. And uh, do we have something that resembles the code? Well, I guess yes. And now we cast it so that we uh, can actually Look at it, we create the value and now we should go to disassembly and actually try to see if we end up somewhere even remotely reasonable. Well, that kind of looks good, I guess, in a sense that we do get something back. But the real question is whether that what we have back is what we wanted. Well, look at that. So result is actually a number literal, which is perfect. So I think if I let it run, we have a successful test. That is a great. I think we should commit this version um, to do uh, check overload uh, 
power. But for now, let's uncomment this. Let's run the whole suite of tests. And then we will um, what's uh, episode number one six five? So it is one six six. Episode one six six. And what we did, we just say. Uh, first implementation of in user defined intrinsics. Uh, great. Now we can try the more complicated versions of this. And to be honest, I'm not sure it will work because the value is not static. Yeah, it will actually not work the, what I originally wanted here. So this stuff, uh, you can't really do that because you will get the wrong thing. And the whole compilation will be very, very confused if you do that. So maybe I will even disallow this. I, I don't know. But this will crash terribly. Uh, let me show you. Even if it uh, doesn't error out on parsing, it will still not do what we want. Uh, so the error invalid identifier. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go into this uh, because uh, I said even if it parses correctly, that it will not uh, work. If we want to return something custom. I will need to uh, have support for allocating memory in um, compile time functions. And right now that's not really there. Um, yeah, that, that's gonna be uh, a thing in itself. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll make a separate video, maybe I'll do it offline. I don't know yet, but that is, uh, just something to consider. So let's roll back for now. I think and then this is a good place to stop. The basics work and there is a bunch of stuff to clean up, but I can do that offline and uh, carefully and methodically. So if you stayed far, then uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you saw something interesting. I certainly think that intrinsics is kind of an interesting idea and not something I've seen in any of the languages really. And let's see how it goes. Uh, for now, goodbye and see you later.